Hello everyone. Um, it's the weekend right now, so I think I might as well go over a recap of my trades for the last week of 2023. So, trading in December, especially in the last week, like after Christmas or so, is generally something people don't really do because it's a, after all, it's a Christmas, it's a holiday season. And it actually also applies the same uh, for me. You will see that the range expansion for the trades uh, during this period is actually quite um, relatively small compared to the usual expansion range um, in the days when there is no such holidays. And also for me, um, it's actually on days like this, like on the holidays where you can have a clearer clearer view of how the algorithms are working. Right, so let's face it, um, the current traders on the market right now um, are mostly uh, robots. They are, they are algorithms controlling like, all the run. So we do accept that uh, there are human traders out there. But the percentage of algorithms uh, executing the orders are much higher. I think it's a range is probably around like ninety percent robots and ten percent humans. That's why if you are doing any trades, it's actually much better to follow like uh, how the algorithms are working. And because algorithms are are programmed by humans, they need reference, they need initiation points, they need like terminals just reference where they can do their calculations and they are working. Okay, and this is where like, ICT comes in. He proposed like certain models like based on the footprints of algorithms that he sees and proposed many different models uh, based on it. While you can see that a lot of his uh, a lot of his trading models are not created by him. He does uh, make his way to popularize quite a fair bit of them. And okay, so this is my uh, recaps of the trades that I take throughout the week. On Monday, the 25th of December is a holiday, so I am not trading. So this current chart is my trading view, uh, is my live streams for the 26th of December on the Tuesday. So, yep, this particular day. And actually, uh, 26th of December is, is um, the second most bullish day of the year. So, in any case, this should be just a buy, buy, buy day. And if you can see here, like um, this is also a classic buy day like, based on IC ICT Daily's profile, where you have accumulation during Asia, manipulation during London, and then into the New York Open. So I expecting it to hit my entry over here and then shoot up directly. Also, we have some uh, five minute confirmations on this, uh, uh, on the DR range, defining range, which is something I pick up from the master. So yeah, and it's because of this confirmation of, of this that I'm very confident that this is a classic buy there as well. So this is a classic buy there. But actually, truthfully, to tell you the truth, I did not um I did not manage to get my entries over here. So um it's on this day I that I do believe that we should go to to trades that I miss out, as it can also teach uh, quite a fair bit rather than just the trades that I managed to take. So on Tuesday, on this day, it's actually a very clear sign to me, but I did not manage to enter the trade. Part of this is because I actually, I had set my limit, uh, orders and stop loss early on and my target uh, very early. And it's because of this, uh, I managed to avoid the fear of missing out like uh, so many traders where they are chasing after the price and then they might blow their account. So in my case, it's the rather opposite because I do not chase trades at all. I just set the limit order. 
and because of this i do miss out quite a fair bit of the trade as well and the reason why i i do keep a recording of this live stream but these live streams are not uh, available uh, to the public for my channel mainly because i i do realize that it is a uh, quite boring i do not provide commentary or anything like this when i'm streaming because i'm mainly streaming for my recording purpose but my live streams are available from my Google Docs. So if you want the link to, to like all these streams, you can get it from my Google Docs and access it. But in terms of live stream, I usually keep them unlisted. So that is available to the public, but only for those with the links. See here, I think at this stage, I might, I realize that I might have been missing out a bit on this particular trade entry because um, actually I missed the trades by three ticks. So that is 0 0.75 points. 0 0.75 points for NQ is actually not that big at all. All right. So you see, at this point, I, I thought it's almost like hitting it already, but it still haven't hit it yet. I went back and checked on the NQ chart. Uh, perhaps I thinking that, is because I, I, it is because I have the differences between the MNQ and the NQ chart that is causing me to miss out by a few ticks. But no, I'm also like missing on the chart a bit in the NQ as well. But anyway, let's move on. You see, I um. So this is about ten minutes in. I realized that I have missed out on the trade. That's why I cancel off the orders because I won't be getting it anymore. So from from this on onwards, it's just a recording for journaling purposes. It's no longer a record for my trade. But we do see that as the trade move on, it just the trade is just keep on going up from my current trade, and it's just moving up. Yep, okay. And it's actually at this stage that I could have uh, re-entered my trade again. So at this level, this particular, I know that this level is protected, so price will not revisit it. But in hindsight, I should have perhaps positioned my entries over here because um, this is also another level that I'm uh, aware of like after the current break of structure over here. Okay, if um, usually ICT likes to re-enter on the break on a smaller time frame, on a smaller time frame break of structure after a higher time frame one, because after all, price are fractal. So he will likely be entering at this particular level and goes up. You see that like price will just keep on going up, going up. But also one thing you have to see here is also like because um, this is December, that's why you see that the charts are not moving as much. The the price is the price range for expansion is not moving as much. And you can see like by how I position my chart right now over here. I'm expecting the price to go up. That's why you can see that my target is probably around this area. That's why I'm leaving a lot of blanks uh, around here because I'm expecting like once the target hit, it will show my target levels over here and the stop loss. Okay. This is um one and a half hours into the trade and it's still within this range but i'm pretty sure that there will be an expansion moving forward okay by this time it's around um two almost two a.m my time so my time zone there's about a 13 hours time gap from us time so a lot of times so i'm actually like already quite sleepy at this time that's why i tend to open my trades during the am session 
and hopefully I'm able to post it uh, right around lunch as well. Okay. Yep, during the AM time, the price is just not expanding as much. But let me show you um, the result that I have. So this is a recording. Uh, I'm sorry, this is a screenshot of my actual uh, trade entries and stop loss. So this red line is my stop loss. This is my entry. And this is my target. Oh, I need a, I need a pen for this. <laughs> right. So you see, if I manage to enter my trades over here, I'll eventually reach my target over here as well. Or if I'm a bit smarter, I could have re-enter in this particular um, re-enter zone after the current break of structure from over here. Because after all, price has already, the algorithm has already shown their cards by saying that, okay, we are bullish, we broke, uh, we are, they have a bit of a high feeling and the close above the DR level. So I'm expecting like this particular low to be the law of the day already. And after this, um, after the price enter over here and the break, I'm expecting this particular area to be protected as well, and this should be my ideal entry part. Yep, I have uh, my entry is set and over here, and that's where I am keeping my trades because I, I'm no longer in the formal, um, formal mindset. All right, let's move on to the next day of uh, trading, which is Wednesday. So Wednesday is a bit uh, interesting. I actually do not trade on that particular day. I have a look during the opening range and it's like, okay, this is just a search and a stick and destroy profile. Stick and destroy profile on the 27th of December, Wednesday. How you define stick and destroy profile is during the Asia session, the London session, and the New York session, price will typically move around in the expansion way. And then when it comes to New York, it will be even more. And how I usually see that is like, I open up the initial balance for Asia and London, and you see that there will be some pokes over the level, like you can see here, this green zone, this particular green zone, uh, represents the opening range for London. And you see at this area over here, these two, they are just poking around the defining range for London. It says that, all right, so for, and Asia is also showing the same uh, signal as well as in both NQ and ES. So what it's showing, what it's telling me is that, okay, in New York Times, we will be crashing through the liquidity all generated around. So this is the liquidity generated during London. And during open, it just mashed through it here. And the liquidity form in London over here, it went up and, and touched it as well and smashed through as well. And then what about this liquidity form over here? It went through and went down and smashed through it. Then there's a liquidity form over here and also the previous liquidity form over here. So what happened? Price went up and, and, and crushed through it. And what about this liquidity over here? Price went down again and went through it, hitting, like triggering like all the stop loss. And what did it do again? One, on the last like uh, power hour, it went up and grabbed like all the liquidity around here. So this is the stick and destroy profile. So where it's just like, hitting the liquidity one after another. Actually, there is a way to trade this, but I do not, um, I generally do not use this on the prop firm because uh, I would like it to respect my, my win reward ratio. So unless I got a better buffer on my prop firm account, I generally do not employ trading on this range first. But you see that, in, the, in terms of expansion, they usually do follow a bit of a trend line. So it is an expansion. 
in a straight line. So that is like one way you can measure and trade on it. Okay, let me rub the erase this all off. And on to our trade on Thursday. Okay. So this is my current trade on Thursday. You see here that I am actually quite short and I'm quite confident in this trade because in this like um uh, zone over here, price is already telling that at higher time frame level they are willing to go down. And it's also precisely because of this, like in twenty uh on twenty first, twenty second, then on the twenty third, I think there's a holiday there. on the twenty sixth. Price is just going up, going up, going up. Then on the twenty seventh, we have a stick and destroy. And on this day, on the twenty eighth, I'm expecting price to just go down, and for the next three days to take out the lows of this of the highs i'm sorry the lows of the bullish uh candle created like during the bullish uh, week of up to christmas so you'll be creating a market maker style model so it's just like going up and then going down all the way this this is the market maker sell model curve right it's also how algorithm usually works on a Higher time frame for the weekly profile. All right. And at the same time, when I'm creating my limit over here, there are days is also aligning with how the the DR range for Uh, with the DR range for London Euro. Now that I know that like it broke down already, I'm expecting it to have like a song su supporting like resistance mm. for this particular uh for this particular day. And the reason I'm choosing an like, NQ over S P just now is because NQ has a stronger leg down, whereas S P is also just meandering around. So it depends on how what type of trader are you. If you are looking at it like a a support and resistance trader, you see that okay, this is where the support is, and this is where the resistance is, and you can argue that it's a this is a re, a support turn resistance over here. So this is a break, and then this is your support, and then it will just continue go down again. Or if you are uh, let's say. The market profile you can also say like this is a head and shoulder where this is my current head and this is my shoulder so essentially everything is almost the same thing all right let me fast forward to when i manage to enter the trade yeah so at this time i this is about 10 minutes in already and you see that there is a bit of a rejection over here. At first, at this point, I thought I might have to encounter the same thing uh, as in Tuesday trading, where I miss out on the trade because I did not set my sell orders a bit lower. But anyhow, this is my trading strategy, and I'm not changing it because I would like to keep my uh, risk to reward ratio uh, the same. Let's move on to. Uh, Maybe trend another bit longer. All right, at this time I have already entered the trade. So this is my current stop loss. My current stop loss at this price, and my entry and my target. Maybe I should uh, keep this in writing. My stop loss. Okay, stop loss is stop loss is one seven one five three point five stop loss. 
then my entry is probably 1714 2.5 entry and my target is 1706.5 this is my target and if you see at this area over here i know that this is a bit of a, a strong support zone because it is actually a strong uh, support confluence with many uh, uh, factors such as it is a low volume node for trading from yesterday prior prior day low volume node so there is there will be a lot of rejection uh, at this level and it's also a bit of a extension uh, i think it's a extension for prior day some sort of a mark market memory so this particular error area is actually a quite a strong support zone what i'm expecting is that price will go down here price will go down here there's a rejection from this uh, area uh, from this price and once you reach out to my entry price it will not hit the stop loss instead it will create a break from this zone then go up and goes down break right towards my target all right so let's move forward a bit uh let's see all right this is okay 40 minutes in already and you see like price is moving exactly like how i am expecting it to be unfortunately in this case there is a bit of a rejection because like i said this is a, a strong rejection zone Okay, let's move to the one hour can one hour mark. And you see that this is where I am a bit worried. Okay, this is an hour plus. And at this point, you see that in no way of stage did I move my stop loss at, at all. Because when I'm expecting the can the only time I will move my stop loss is if I see this like candle break below this zone if it's within like if the rejection is like uh, at this particular at this zone what i'm exp uh, what i'm saying is a bit of a time distortion what time distortion is doing it is creating liquidity in this area so it will create a zigzag over here and generating liquidity all over down here so that it can go so that price can goes up before dumping down again but the problem with this for me now is it is pushing the targets and all the timing right to a to a later hour or a later date and this time distortion is telling me that okay sure price can move up to this to almost this high again so which is why i'm a bit hesitant to move my stop loss over here because I I will move my stop loss to lower when I'm seeing a uh, actual break within the structure. But you see that I'm in the future in the later hours I'm moving my stop down anyway. Let me move to that particular time. Right. So you see that price is just moving uh, in a tight zone within within uh, this particular channel. This is what I'm saying that it, I, uh, the algorithm has moved into a time distortion um, uh, algorithm and it's just generating liquidity during the trading hours, which for me is actually quite a bad thing because if you look at the time, it's already 1 a.m. 1 a.m. my time, I'm already quite sleepy at this time, but I'm still soldiering on. okay at this stage i i move my stop loss down um because looking at the range i'm not expecting the price to hit my to the stop the price to hit my stop loss anymore it will be close but it will it will not reach uh at, until my level and also because at this stage i'm actually moving around i'm no longer at my screen i'm preparing to go to bed as it's already 1 plus am 
Okay. You see here? All right. So this is where the candle is moving. It's um around 2 a.m. So it's uh, 1 a.m. Uh, 1 p.m. US time. And you see that candle is already moving downwards. It's showing that the higher level candles, they are aiming for the bottom. So that's why my entry and my stop loss here are all protected as already because algorithm is is detecting so they will first meet their target before re deciding to move to, to move anywhere else but it's also because of this you see like all these wicks created in this particular zone that's why i said like this particular line like this area over here is a strong support so if you're a support and resistance trader if you set your entries like over here you actually can generate quite a few uh, quite a few fair bit of a scalp if that's the type of trader that you are so it actually doesn't matter what type of trader you are like even retail even like smart money concept there's a way to make money uh, from all of the trading methods Right, so there is actually like no one trading method that is like quite uh, better than anyone else. Because if you are actually a scalper and you're scalping based off the uh, demand and resistance zone, your profit ratio is actually can be quite higher than mine. Because what I do is I'm usually just a position holder. Okay. So let me move like almost to the end of the all right at this stage you see that like price price breaks over here but there is no candle close below here it's showing that uh, the uh, the algorithm is showing willingness to go down but it is still not saying that okay i i'm gonna be fully committed to going up that's why there's also like one last week over here and it's also because of this drive that I see the weight created over here. And I know that the willingness of the algo is to go down. That I know that this is the next protected high already. So I can move my stop loss to this area. Okay. And at this stage, like this live stream has been going on for three hours. I have been sitting on the desk for maybe like four hours plus or something like that. And it this is almost like reaching 3 a.m. my time. At this stage, I'm actually very, very sleepy already. It's usually not uh, usual for me to hold my trade for this long. All right, uh, let me hold on. Okay, so you see, I've moved my stop loss over here because I believe like this is the next protected high. Let me write this down over here. One seven one three seven point five. This is my stop loss number two. Because at this stage, I believe that it will meet my target first rather than hitting my stop loss at all. So price can move within this range, but it will hit my target first before even reaching my stop loss. And at this stage, I am quite confident in my uh, execution. But if you look at the uh, screenshot later, I actually did close my trade earlier, mainly because I, when I'm going to bed, I do not want to hold any open position. And because of that, I closed my position, like quite entry at the, at the very high end. Okay, so this is the, uh, execution I, this is a screenshot of the chart that i make the day after so this area over here is the globex and you see here this is my entry my entry um my stop loss and my target you see here look at this is my entry at this particular area and actually i so my position around here, uh, close to about 3 a.m. like that because I just need to go back to sleep already. And you see the price did move down straight away after that. And 
even during Goblet Expo, if price is just catch up, it never went back to the stop loss or even the sec the protector second stop loss over here. It went up quite close, but it never never reached up to that level. Shows that at the higher the higher time frame algorithm is moving and just went down to the target right around the at 15 time on the next day even though it's saying you see that like this movement is just like less than it's just I think 70 points it takes like more than a day for it to operate so this is also like why i'm not particularly keen to trade um on the last week of the december okay let me erase this And then on Friday, I actually did not trade at all because after I took the screenshot of this and also I have a look at the opening range for uh, for a short while, I went directly to sleep because I am too sleepy at this time. See. And also I believe that even if I am um, trading, I might miss out on catching the trade. Yep, so just it's just that like if you look directly like I won't probably won't be catching the trade around this zone, but it's like after uh even though I'm expecting price to go down, like I said, like previously it was just bullish, 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 mix, then go down, even though on this particular day on Thursday it's just a very slight decline. I'm expecting it to be intensified on Friday instead, just to going ahead with the curve. So by this time, I had already closed my platform and I went back to sleep and I missed out this particular trade downwards. And so that's my entire tech, uh, my entire trade recap for the week. Do let me know in comments if you have anything to add or if you like this at all. I might make this a weekly thing if there's support for it or maybe not but let's see so do keep in mind that like um, in the first week first second week of January I could be a bit busy with work in the company I might trade less during this time if my time does permit me to do so well thank you for watching and see you next time